philandering CEOs are finally getting fired. Good. Having a romantic relationship with an employee didn't <coughs> didn't used to be <coughs> a fire <coughs> fireable offense for CEOs. They would get canned for misappropriating funds to fuel the affair or for not fully disclosing the details to the board when they eventually get caught. But it was really the relationship itself that got them fired, if they even got fired at all. It was a part of the trade-off corporate board seemed willing to make. If you wanted a charismatic and creative CEO, then the thinking went that you needed to accept the boundary pushing, big ego, a burden to lose, and the occasional indiscretion that could come along with it. But in the last few years, the boardrooms across corporate America have recalculated whether they should be taking these kinds of escalapses as a warning sign of bigger problems. For the latest proof point, look at Norfolk a Southern Corporation. Last month, the railroad ousted then CEO Alan Shaw for violating its policies by having a consensual relationship with the company's chief legal officer, uh, Nabita Neg. Neg was also fired. No folks strict the no tolerance stance about office relationship with subordinate shows just how seriously companies have come to take this type of CEO misconduct. Boulders now grapple with the question of what consent really means when there's an innate imbalance of power. But it's not just the cultural shift that's driving the crackdown on executives' dalliances. Boulders have a strong business case as researchers find increasing evidence pointing to a link between problematic personal and professional behavior. We know that both see these kind of relationships, especially extramarital, as signs that the operation of the organization isn't tight, says that Amy, a professor of psychology at the University of New Haven, who studies workplace relationship. It's not necessarily about values. This is a signal to the board that there could be other issues. The 2015 hack of Ashley uh, Madison, the cited slogan is, life is short, have an affair, gave academics a treasure trove of data to examine the connection between cheating at home and at work. One study found that companies run by the 47 CEOs and the 48 CFOs who were paying Ashley Madison users. 97% of them married were twice as likely to have had a financial misstatement or involvement in a class action security lawsuit.